duty, ladies and gents. It's uh, the 524th daily in a row. In part one, we were looking at Idra versus Roro in kind of a typical standard starting position. I don't think there's anything too noteworthy there. Still went through a lot of the logic of why things occurred the way that they occurred. Um, but at this point in time, things look a little ambiguous. So we want to talk about what is our plan in Idra's shoes. We're a Zerg who's trying to secure a third and has no real other wish in the world. Now, first and foremost, if we sense some sort of weakness in our opponent, um, if, you know, if, uh, for instance, he tries to attack up here and we kill everything off, I think it's pretty easy to say nothing's wrong with making a play at his third. Or if we can just look and we see that he doesn't have any units or perhaps is teching to a hive and is low on defenses and we think there's a window, then we can very straightforwardly attack. And if you're unsure, don't force it. But I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, if you think you can go freaking kill him, then just go do it. But let's assume for the moment that our opponent is reasonable and stable enough. What is our plan? What is our goal at this point in time? Certainly to build up some roach um, infester, but what are some key positions to hold? The most significant positions to note are the ones that will defend this expansion here, this is going to be our fourth base, as well as defend this expansion here, going to be our fifth base. Most notably, the difficulties of defending this as a fourth include counterattacks along this alleyway, counterattacks along this alleyway with small numbers of units, and of course the big ol' attacks that swing on down through this one. So, in order to defend this, this is actually one of the most significant pieces of terrain. By holding this, we effectively cut off almost all counterattacks down to this base. The only counterattack that we're really that he could do would be down this alley and then up and then over, but that actually takes a tremendous amount of time. And you can solve this by planting an overlord here. And just looking, hell, you can have Overlord here, Overlord here, and great, you spotted everything. And holding this gives an easy defense here. Also, this ensures that our opponent will not be really willing to do a big attack up here because we have the concave advantage. Therefore, his only real opportunities then would be some attacks in this area, in this broad area. And all we got to do is snatch up a Watchtower. So Watchtower here, Army Force here. That's my big goal. And if I want to lock him down on his, uh, if I want to lock him down and prevent him from taking this base, this watchtower is the best position, but it still leaves us a little bit vulnerable at the backside. So I'm not willing to take this watchtower and defend this fourth at the same time. I would much rather take this watchtower on three bases, but once I move to four, I'd be a little bit more conservative and do this. Um, yeah, and the other, the other, I'll actually hold on that for now. Um, there's no reason to get too, too caught up in that. But I'm definitely looking to take a fourth and secure my position up here. That's what I would really, really, really love, love, love to do. Now, if you don't already do this, you can easily just box and get a good count of drones, like this. Doing that boxing. Ah, two rows of drones at each base plus some change is the money. Or excuse me, two rows of drones mining minerals plus change, like two, three, four more or so. But again, I love this play from Idra. I get all my gas geysers early to be able to focus on gas as my lead. And with this, I am just focusing on my missile attacks, focusing on my infester pathogen glands. And in the unit station, we see a smattering of roaches from Idra. This is a nice way to get a basic economic lead in a Zerg versus Zerg to focus on outgassing your opponent so that way you have the defensive infestors and you get to spend all the leftover larva on dem drones. So okay, sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. A couple small little counterattacks. This is what I mean by a play to gain advantage versus a play to prevent damage. This um, this spine crawler and this baneling nest 
or excuse me, this Bain Ling, this is the sort of play that will prevent you from receiving a lot of damage, right? This is gonna shut down a small Ling counterattack. This is the sort of thing that gains damage. The point of this daily is not to emphasize this sort of stuff. Sure, this is gonna look nifty, but don't get obsessed with that for the purposes of this daily. Do -do 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 -do. So we can already see Idra making some uh, bold pokes, actually very bold, because he completely neglected to get the Glial Reconstitution upgrade. Um, not, not a mistake, not, oh my god, Idra totally botched up, because again, slow roaches and infestors uh, can defend just fine. Uh, I do think it is a little late, though. <laughs> but already, we're starting to do uh, little positioning things like this. Just do some poking and prodding. This is a maneuver to ensure the potential success of this. Now that might look amazing, but it's not its not a game-changing, game-endingly significant thing that just went on. Everything else that Idra's doing, getting this extra macro hatch up, I mean, we see that Roro is, is a little bit behind on that. Again, this is another advantage of focusing on the Infestors early. If you focus on Infestors first, you generally get your macro hatch up a slight bit earlier. But no one really has any significant lead in the army supply. Hell, even in the unit supply, they're both dead even the Infestors. So, alright. What's going on with Idra right now? Overseer Cocoon. What's the goal? Why build an Overseer here? Sure to um, check out. Uh, for any sort of cloaked things, for any detection, but it's also to poke out to see if we have that open opportunity at this position. Because that will help us defend our fourth. Notice how Roro, by holding this watchtower, leaves a huge wide open angle over here, and also is not as defending of this fourth base. Idra can very easily just waltz roaches up like this and make pokes at it. I think this third base is well defended enough with these infestors. So Idra has this nice little arc being held, moving this spine crawler up. Spine crawler and three roaches. Preventing counterattacks. Super duper duper slick. Both play oh yeah, there's Idra now finally getting this, you know, plus one, plus range, plus speed. I would never want to wander up here without speed. Because if I'm wrong and I have to run away, I actually want to, you know, freaking be able to run away. So Idra. Wait, does Idra seriously not have speed yet? Okay. Jeez, sorry. I, I misread this. I actually looked at this, and I was like, wait, he's not started speed yet? But never mind. Yeah, he's moving up right before he gets speed. So this instantly is quite a nice position. Quite an extremely nice position to be in is Idra. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and take a brief pause right here. Already we're seeing some nice things that Idra's doing. Look, watching for counterattacks with an Overseer to make sure that no infested Terrans pop up. We're even seeing the same thing over uh, from Roro, making sure. And this little pod with an Overlord is increasingly becoming like absolutely critical in this matchup. And it's pretty damn easy to just send the Overlord there. But um, I think typically, like especially if you watch chat for major events, it's easy to look at this and, or like the chat's always like, oh, Roro gets an early fourth, Roro's gonna win. Oh God, you know, maybe they'll, they'll cite the infester count, like Roro has more infestors, bah, and all that stuff. Idra has too many roaches. Very, very common things to note. However, we're actually in an extremely nice position here. And we're about to see all the reasons why this position I think is really critical. And knowing where to position your bulk army when it has nothing else to do ends up being extremely significant for your fourth and fifth bases. Look at this nice little tactic, lobbing up the infested swarm egg on the top side. Even though we end up getting surrounded here, we will always get the broader angle because this is actually a choke. So we can run our units out like this in a spread out in this area and have a significant concave edge. So it shut, we've already shut down the attack from two chokes, one choke here and one choke here. It's difficult for our opponent to move through this because if, if we ever catch him off guard, we can run all our units up and slice this thing off. 
But here's a really nice advantage to Idris positioning here. This attack doesn't actually really have anywhere to go that's going to be great. Because as Idra, you have a reinforced path right here. And this huge army can end up pulling back and you get just a fine concave there. So you're attacking from this angle and this angle. Which is another way of saying you have the, the huge edge in the concave. I actually want to note... <laughs> this is funny to come to the numbers. Um, Roro has more infestors. More hydras. A, a comparable amount of roaches. Idra has just a few extra roaches. Watch how badly the AI of Idra's units end up wandering, and yet still how nicely Idra wins this attack. Alright, we got a few units just sort of wandering out there on that side. This attack doesn't really have anywhere clean to go. There's not really a huge threat here, especially with these rocks up. So small pack of units gets caught off guard in a really awful position. However, this concave from Idra just sort of automatically becomes so good, and oh, look at this. Idra even lost half of his units at this backside. But we'll still have the ability to reinforce from this other angle. Certainly requires a little bit of finesse to make sure that you engage at the appropriate angle, but... and make sure that you time this surround, but... Idra kills this off pretty dang bad. Now this is one of those battles where I will come back and we can see that there are some key moments that we think would be working against Idra. This is going to be another fungal here. But it really it's the fact that Roro's units can't help but bunch up. I mean how do you position your units so that they're not bunched up? I mean, maybe you can pull up this way, but that is the equivalent of Idra defending the attack. Yeah, just uh, some solid fungals. Roro, I, I think, did not actually throw out as many infested tens as he perhaps needed to, but... Very, very one-sided fight. Idra actually ends up being ahead. So this is one of these cool bits where if we come back to this moment here... This position that Idra has is not just defending the 4th, it's also defending a future 5th. It's also putting up some threat here to be able to get into this position, which again is not a great position, but it still does allow you to make an attack up towards this base. And we have some control over this high ground ledge, so we can start working our way over to here. In a moment we get to see the other key position that um, Idra will get in. And this one, I think, is actually quite weird. It's the exact opposite spot. Um, it's this spot, but for Roro, on Roro's side. Just as critical as this is to defend counterattacks to protect the 4th and to protect the 5th, if your opponent controls it, you are really, 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 really screwed. So, it was doing the smart thing after a winning battle. He's going to flood roaches to be able to kill this off, but then he's going to pull back sharply. Roro does the smart play, which is to try to go for some counterattacks, but look at this spine crawler. This is a actually very weirdly placed spine crawler that if you rewind for some time in the game, or excuse me, I guess I need to rewind even more, this spine crawler was actually constructed here. So here's the, the spine crawler from the start of the game that's always been there. But down the road, Idra elects to build a spine crawler here first, and very often we see that winding up here, being constructed there. But this is where Idra actually elects to, le to leave it. Because its counterattacks at the third are really our struggle. Not so much counterattacks at the fourth, there's no drones at the fourth, and also we want our army to be defending that. But, whoa! Holy warp speed, jeez. Idra kills this base off, and then instantly just pulls back sharply. We still have this spine crawler here and this spine crawler here to prevent from counterattacks. I think most importantly of all, there's that baneling that's on top of the ramp that eh, kind of whiffs. But still gives us that opportunity to deflect stuff. So there's the overseer that's sort of locking everything down. 
Abra slowly starts to work forward. And weirdly enough, four base Zerg versus three base on this map is a nightmare for the four base Zerg. Because these starting three bases for Roro are so tightly packed together that they're almost it's almost impossible not to defend them. But the fourth base is vulnerable from the high ground, uh, is vulnerable from this attack angle up here. You're vulnerable to a swing up over here because there's so much focus on the fourth. You're vulnerable to this swing at the backside. So like four attack paths open up just by taking the fourth base. Whereas you only really had two on a three base player and they're both quite bad. But Idrid does this marvelous little move. He cuts up to mid. He has overlords over this critical pod side. And then he has this overseer watching this backside for possible counters. With again the little emergency backup spine crawler. And then Idrid just parks up here. He just hangs. He doesn't really force anything to happen, he just chills. Oddly enough, oh cool, he kills that overlord. Oddly enough, this is an excellent way to protect this base. This ends up being quite an easy way to protect this base by having this huge army here. Roro is forced to keep an equivalent giganto arc here because the instant a, too many units head down to this bottom right base to kill it off, Idra can march down here and take out this base. Idra just needs minimal defense from a counterattack now, and some vision spotters, and now this is also quite hard to take for Roro. So, in this spot, I mean, Idra's not trying to force anything magical to happen. He's not going to create a, an attack. I don't think there's anything too bad with um, you know, positioning a unit here, but we don't even need to move units and try to do a counterattack here because hell, he just moves units from there up. I mean, it's a very small distance for him to defend that. But this now is a perfectly acceptable uh, way to apply pressure as Idra. Or more immediately, this. So look at this, just chilling. Chilling, hanging out. And what does Idra do in response? Layer. Evolution Chamber, second Evolution Chamber. Just instantly goes through all that. Small set of roaches just kind of shutting down the vision control of Roro in mid-map. We have the small set of roaches that can move up to this top side. The hive is under attack. This extractor actually doesn't really get the chance to go down, and that's a significant amount of gas that's lost. And that's all Idra really needs. Idra will... It doesn't quite have the lead in the investors, but he has the lead in the hive, he has the lead in the upgrades. And I think most sweetly of all, Burrow is like the sickest way to exploit a Zerg player that is is having trouble because he's spread out too thinly. It, this is just so kick-ass. I love this. It's such an easy way to exploit that sort of player. And we even have the Hydra sort of throwing darts from the high ground. Again, this is very comfortably defended. It's so difficult for Roro to get roaches all the way down there and get them out again. They're almost certain to die. In an extreme example, if Roro moved all the way down there with a lot of roaches, Idra can bring his whole army back and that huge pack of roaches will 100% die. This is what happens when you have that slight lead in expansions. Roro actually has to make a whole bunch of spine crawlers just to feel comfortable at his fourth base. He starts trying to move some more roaches down. And I think the attack comes here in a moment. Nope, just more roaches from Idra moving down to the backside. And he's replacing this supply with bigger and better stuff. Look, going straight for the 3-3 upgrades, which I think is super important. Just having more money overall. And this is a really cool moment. Hydras are spotted here, moving down to defend this base. So Idra just darts down to this expansion for a big attack. There are spines and infestors, and it ends up doing, uh, it prevents Idra from moving in. No problem. He can just pull back. He's already killed this off. 
And then he's going to re-secure this, and he has his fifth base again. The only thing Idra gives up by moving down here is it opens up an opportunity for the opponent to get a fifth base. So Idra is actually more than willing to fight for control over this position until the angle looks slightly bad. And this, I think, is another super key move. It's so easy to say to yourself, oh my god, this was a really good position. This was really critical that I get it, and I think I can cut him off, even if it, like... I actually think maybe, maybe Idra could have gotten a slight angle here. Like, pull back and then sharply cut up. The Hydras are going to be pretty damn bunched. But literally, like, the zero risk play. Because he has an extra expansion out. There's no need. Killing off all these rocks. I like killing off this one. I don't like so much killing off this side. I like kind of pinning them back because I have this extra base, but Idra just has like the easiest time attacking out here. And there's no way Roro's going to get an angle there. Like, not in the slightest. So, to me, it's just, it's just a marvelous thing to see at this point in time that just by maintaining hold of this position and this position pretty aggressively, and by having spine crawlers defending a counterattack, and here's another counterattack that's being defended. And oh, look at that. Even trying to strengthen it as late game continues. Idra's been able to just get way ahead. He has this extra expansion. He's ahead in the upgrades. Once again, huge army moves down here. But what's really the ideal attack angle? There's already these spines here. So good. So yeah, so Idra's got it in total. Uh, man mode lockdown. Aw, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point. Uh, from there on out, we're just going to see how Idra wraps the game up nice and slowly. Not a tremendous edge. If we actually look at the money, Idra has about an extra 600, 700 minerals and about another extra five, 600 in gas. But in the unit station, not a really clear edge for either player still. It kind of seems... Still quite even, but you would generally argue Idra's ahead because he has the extra expansion. It's not a huge lead, but we're going to continue to see in part 3 how Idra wraps the game up by just not giving his opponent an extra inch. It's not about dealing huge damage. It's not about destroying your opponent with the key money fungal. It's just about pulling back and pulling back and pulling back, having the tech slider ahead, having the upgrade slider ahead, getting the broodlords out slightly earlier, and it's all been adding up. We will see the final culmination of it after this. Thank <laughs> you.